So uh, in this video, I'm going to explain to you how I seeded the bearings, okay? And um, so I took the bearings. There's no oil on anything, not the bolts, not the bearings, not the rods. And I didn't use this wrench. Uh, take the bearings and insert them into each half and push them in with your fingers, trying to get them centered. You can see how this one's kind of off down here a little bit and see how this one doesn't seat. Then I took the uh, rod bolts and uh, by finger just ran them all the way in. Try to squeeze this a little bit, not real hard, and it wouldn't go in right here. See, loosen this up, tighten this down, it still wouldn't go in any farther. So I said, okay. So I tightened them up with my fingers only. Once I got them up as tight as I could, feather light with this wrench. You know what feather light means? Hardly at all. Uh, I screwed this in and this closed up real nice, okay? If it's not closing up and you're barely turning it, there's something wrong, stop, go back and check it out. But you know, it closed up real nice, so then I took it all apart. Um, keep the rods and the end caps in the right direction. There's dots on the stuff showing you where it's supposed to be. I put some oil on the crankshaft. I didn't put any oil on this. <clears throat> I took a uh, paper towel and just got it a little bit wet with oil and wrapped it around the bolts and got some oil on them. They're not dripping wet with oil. They got oil on them, okay? Then we have our inch pound, not foot pound, inch pound torque wrench, which also has newton, newton meters on the other side of the scale, so don't mix them up as you're flipping this thing around. What I do is, uh, at one point it says to torque to 100 uh, inch pounds, so I set it at 100, and then every time I click it, that's one inch pound, and I just start counting them as I do all this stuff. I don't rely on this thing anymore. I count them, and I might look at it to double check, but I count how many times I hear it click when I turn it. So I want to go from 100 to 120, I turn it 20 clicks, okay? Mainly because that thing's too hard to read. So anyhow, we've got our 12-point um, quarter-inch socket, not 6-point. And that should be in just about any quality tool kit. we got our instructions laying here. And um, let me turn the volume down on this video. Um, let's see what we see here. Okay, so what I did was, uh, we considered this uh, PTO to be the front of the engine because if you're working on this, that's what you're going to look in and see. You can't look in from back here and see these rods. You can only look in from the PTO end. In the instructions, it says make sure that the dots on the uh, piston rod are facing you. Well, that would be over here because they can't face you the other direction. Um, there's uh, one dot, one dot on one of the rods and two dot, two dots on the other rods. Uh, that's just so that you keep the end caps together. That is, doesn't mean it's for one, you know, number one cylinder, number two cylinder. However, you can take advantage of that and put the one dot on the one number one cylinder, the two dot on the number two cylinder, and then you'll forever have these things together and not screw them up. Okay. So we uh, take them back apart from the previous picture, install them on the crankshaft here, and we don't put both of them on at the same time. But just put one on, and uh, we run the bolts in using our fingers, and then. Uh, we torque them up to 100 inch pounds, okay? And I don't do one bolt the entire way. Uh, <clears throat> you can do it by feel. You're turning it turning pretty easy. Start to snug up, stop, do the other bolt, and then keep going back and forth until you hit 100 inch pounds, okay? Then follow the directions, which say uh, to torque it up uh, to 120, uh, 140. And let me start over a little bit because I told you to go to 100 inch pounds. It's 60 inch pounds. The 100 is in the next step. So after you finger tight them on here and you're getting ready to use a torque wrench for the very first time on here, um, sit there and turn them uh, until they start to feel snug and stop and go to the next bolt until you hit 60 inch pounds on each bolt. Then start adding 20 pounds until you reach 150 inch pounds. Okay, so you're going to do this over and over and over. And uh, when you hit 150 inch pounds, you're going to back the bolts up, untighten them to 100 inch pounds. Now, you know, I don't know how you do that other than just turn the bolts back. So what I did was I, I turned each bolt back an eighth of a turn, uh, in, you know, bounced back between them until I turned each one about a quarter turn, and then I set my torque wrench at 100 and saw, uh, tried to determine if it turned a little bit and then went to 100 inch pounds, and it seemed to. If you uh, turn the bolts back a quarter turn after you've tightened them 150 and you set your wrench at 100 and you go to turn them and it doesn't turn at all and it, go, it clicks instantly on 100 inch pounds, you haven't loosened them enough, so loosen them a little bit more. I think the key here is you don't want to loosen them a whole lot, okay? Uh, once you get them back down to where you've uh, got them at 100 inch pounds, then start torquing them back up again, just like you did the last time, uh, 20 inch pounds at a time. Now, uh, it says that if you used Molly Lube, 
to stop at 150. Well, I use motor oil, so I went to 170 because that's what it says to do. Uh, once I got to 170, I stopped. And uh, then it's talking about uh, you may have put uh, the um, plastic gauge on there. Well, I'm not going to put the plastic gauge on there yet until I get the bearings seated, okay? So I, I wouldn't combine the plastic gauge test into this bearing seating operation, okay? Um, they're right now torqued to 170 inch pounds, and then I set them aside, and I don't have any plastic gauge. I got to go get some, so I'll just let them sit there. Um, they could be there today or tomorrow. Whenever I get the plastic gauge, then I'll go loosen them back up, take them apart, insert the plastic gauge, repeat this entire process. Not the first part, but the, the second part where I torque them to 60 and then start going uh, 20 pounds at a time to 170 because I used oil and not molly. If you used molly, it would be 150. Um, and then I would loosen them back up. But the plastic gauge would be in there at that point. It's getting squashed, and then I could you know check and see what the oil gap is. And I'll, I'll do a video on that too. But uh, there's no reason for me to loosen them up. They can sit over there and relax and do whatever they're going to do and get more round overnight, you know. Um, so, anyhow, uh, this only took about 20 minutes to do. It's no big deal. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what the plastic gauge says it is. I also measured them um, with calipers and stuff. And uh, the crankshaft's right. Uh, after these had been uh, initially seated but not compressed like this, uh, they were kind of all over the place. They, were, they weren't round, but they hadn't been on the crankshaft yet, okay? Um, but they'd been uh, tightened up and seated with the finger tightening and the uh, little wrench going feather light. And uh, at that point, they're not round. They've got to be put on here to get round. That's why I'm going to let them sit over here tonight and get as round as they want to get, relaxing and stuff. Uh, some people would probably tell you to put some oil in there so they, the the bearing can slide around on the rod okay to get you know more in line where it needs to be uh, i don't do that because that puts thickness behind the bearing which may actually cause it not to seat properly and be even tighter on the crankshaft these are really loose on the crankshaft um as long as there's no uh you know grit or some kind of defect burr or something they you shouldn't need any oil on the back of the bearing on you know against the rod um i mean hell you don't even want oil back there because you don't want the bearing to slip. That's why they have tangs in them uh, to keep them from spinning around. If the bearing spins, well, yeah, that's it. It's all over. Uh, so anyhow, that's what I did. Now I'm going to just sit there overnight and maybe I'll drive over to town and get some plastic gauge. I think I found a place that has some, supposedly. Because I'm out in the boonies and finding plastic gauge out here is like <laughs> unbelievable. But uh, so maybe that's my next mission. I'll run over to town and get some plastic gauge. So maybe I'll do it tonight.